Rev up your engines. Today I'm going to talk about horsepower ratings in your car. And I sound a little funny because I got back from England. Everybody there has a cold. Now when they build cars, unfortunately the manufacturers kind of cheat. They use horsepower ratings that are measured at the crank of the engine. Well, the crank of the engine isn't connected directly to your wheel, so it's lying horsepower. You get a lot less horsepower to the wheels that actually drive the car. Now, the actual loss of horsepower between the engine and the wheels is different for all cars. Horsepower is basically energy, and energy is lost due to inertia, drag, windage, pumping, friction, and it's different for every engine, transmission, and driveline design that a car has. For example, this Toyota Matrix has a transverse engine. So the engine's actually spinning in the same direction as the wheels are turning. So you don't lose right angle loss of energy. So front wheel drive cars with transverse engines are more efficient. That's why there's a lot of them out there. But take older rear wheel drive cars like a 63 Impala that I learned to drive on when I was a kid. You got an engine in the front that spins this way, but the tires spin at an angle of that, so you have to have a drive shaft and then a differential, and the energy changes at right angles, and every time it changes, you lose some energy. And of course, if you have an automatic transmission, you lose energy that way by the torque converter, which has some slippage. So if you want to lose less horsepower, get a standard transmission car. It doesn't have slippage because it doesn't have a torque converter. And of course, wheel bearings, they create drag and friction, and you lose horsepower through that too. Now within the drivetrain, the part that goes from the engine to put power to the wheels, that's called the drivetrain, the main loss is inside the differential and your final drive, and you get further losses from inside the transmission itself which gets heat from gears spinning around, and heat is an efficiency, so you lose horsepower. And if you have an all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive vehicle, the transfer case loses a lot of horsepower too, because it's another set of gears that are gonna build up heat and create friction and lose horsepower. That's one of the main reasons that fast motorcycles use chains. They get rid of a lot of that drivetrain loss. As you can see on my Triumph, the crank and the engine spins like this, Go back with the chain, the wheel spins the same direction, so you don't lose much power at all using a chain. Now, some early cars and trucks actually had a chain drive on them, but when you got a chain drive, it's really high maintenance. The chains need lubrication, adjusting, they're open to the elements, so it's really not practical to have a chain-driven car these days. And heck, many motorcycles have gone to shaft drives because there's less maintenance. Now you do lose a little more power, and in a motorcycle it's gyroscopic, it's spinning, so it kind of affects the handling a little bit in a motorcycle. But in a car, a chain would be kind of absurd. Realize in a car that you're gonna be driving down a road every day, you're gonna lose horsepower from various reasons, and the rated horsepower is not gonna be what's at the rear wheels. You're gonna lose power going to the rear wheels from the engine horsepower, and it's generally gonna be anywhere from 15 to 25% depending on the design of the vehicle. For example, Ford was insane enough a few years ago to give me a 2013 Shelby GT500, which was rated at the crank of 662 horsepower. So I put it on a dynamometer, that's how you measure it, the car's on the dyno, the wheels spin this giant roller, and you see how much horsepower the engine actually puts out at the rear drive wheels, because it was a rear wheel drive car. And it turned out, that that Mustang, instead of putting out 662 horsepower, actually put out 595 horsepower. Still a lot of horsepower, and that's at the actual wheels, the true power. Now that 595 horsepower at the rear wheels was enough to propel it to 201 miles an hour. Now that's the reason they put so much horsepower. They wanted to make a car you could buy at the dealer that would do over 200 miles an hour. But let's face it, most people don't need to be driving 200 miles an hour in their regular car. But you want an efficient car that makes the best use of its horsepower so you get better gas mileage and have decent power for driving around. And that's why most cars have gone to these transverse front wheel drive. It's more efficient and you got smaller horsepower generally, but it works better. And to realize that if you're into modifying things, the little four-cylinder engine in this Toyota Matrix is the same basic engine they put in the small Lotuses. And they can soup those things up to put in more than 400 horsepower if you really want to. So now you know what horsepower rating really means on your car.
and hopefully I'll have enough voice left to do my live car talk today. Who knows? I'll do like the English said since I got the cold from them. Keep calm and carry on. Well, I won't keep calm, but I'll carry on. <laughs> so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.